mind and misery excerpt from horizons beyond the mind misery represents a complete discontinuity with the whole and disharmony between body mind and being very easily we say that person is miserable or i am feeling miserable but we do not know what does misery really mean misery represents a complete discontinuity with the whole that means you are completely cut off with the whole you are sitting in your cave like robinson crusoe saying that nobody is there to help you or anything you forget that they whether somebody is there to help you or not the existence supports you always you get the fresh air you get the breeze you get the light you get all that is existential and also it means there is a disharmony between your body mind and be body says something else mind refutes that and being is total disagreement with that a miserable person is bound to infect people with his misery a miserable person cannot act otherwise this is how he is he can wish to do otherwise but he cannot really do that is not in the very nature of things it is impossible it is against the law of existence if you are stinking how can you give fragrance to others whenever you are giving something to others you are giving yourself in some way or the other you are imparting your being your existence through your sharing you are sharing your innermost space that you are the so called public servants have been the most mischievous ones on the earth wherever they are they have created more misery than anybody else if we can get rid of all public servants humanity will be in a far better situation however these would not leave humanity alone and what are they gaining out of it they are gaining only one thing they are miserable and they want to forget all about it and the best way is to start thinking of others misery that is an escape from your own miserable space when you become too much concerned about others problems naturally your own problems recede into darkness it is a well known fact that the psychoanalysis and psychotherapists are basically trying to avoid their own psychological problems they are afraid to face them and the easiest way is to become focused on others problem and when you are surrounded by the problems of the others there are so many and when you are surrounded by the problems of the others that are so many and bigger than yours naturally you start forgetting about your own problems there is no time to think about you the so called public servants and social reformers are indeed escapists they are full of misery tension anguish and anxiety i know their innermost lives they are carrying a thousand and one wounds and still they are trying to help others in the process they can only contaminate others and infect as well the first thing is to create a blissful state in your own innerness your subjectivity should be full of fragrance your being should be a dance a song a festival of lights that out of that joy compassion arises this is neither service nor duty indeed it is love it is you your being your inner space and then you are not obliging anyone you are simply overflowing with joy and fragrance then you are like a cloud full of rain water and when the cloud is full of rain water it must shower when you are full with bliss joy and dance what can you do you cannot contain it within yourself you must shower then you are just like a lotus full of beauty and fragrance or a rose flower 
that has blossomed and its beauty must spread and the fragrance must fill the air surrounding it. It allows its fragrance to fill the winds with its aroma. It is no obligation to the winds. So too the clouds are not obliging the earth. In fact, the clouds feel obliged to the earth because it has allowed to unburden itself. Clouds were burdened, they were full of rain water and earth helps to absorb the, that rain water. Thus it unburdens the clouds. The wind absorbs the aroma, the fragrance of the flower and thus unburdens the flower. And riding the wings of the wind, the aroma reaches far. The lotus feels grateful to the wind. The rose flower feels grateful to the wind because the wind allowed it to release its splendor. It is infinitely grateful. There is no question of service in it and there is no question of helping others. Flower is not helping others. The rain clouds are not helping others. Simply they are so full that they are now unburdening themselves. When from time to time, week after week, these meditation sessions take place, it is a sharing, it is an overflow. You are not obliged to listen to these. If the fragrance reaches you, it satiates you, fills you with something of the beyond, you can listen to these. You have to consider only one thing. There is no question of service. There is no question of helping others. Certainly it is a natural consequence of blissfulness. I am blissful, overflowing and this is a sharing. You have to consider one thing deeply. Are you blissful? Are you in a state of celebration? Are you a cloud? full of rain water? Are you a flower full of fragrance and splendor? If you are not, then forget this idea of helping others. Certainly you will drag them more into misery. You will become a burden. You will sit on their heads and they will have to carry you. And of course, being a public servant, being a great social worker, it is your birthright to sit on people's heads. They have to worship you. You are great and so is your own. They have to feel your greatness, superiority and compassion and all that is bullshit. Unless you are blissful, it is not possible for you to help others. Remember this as a sutra, as an important message. Unless you are blissful within, it is not possible for you to help others. An unlit candle cannot help other unlit candles. It is only a lit candle that light another unlit candle. Only a lit candle can help other candles to become lit. And the miracle is when the flame goes from one lit candle to another unlit candle, the lit candle loses nothing. And from one lit candle, millions of candles can be lit. Still it loses nothing. Others gain, but you lose nothing. You go on overflowing and you go on feeling more and more full. In fact, just the opposite happens. The more you give and share, the more you have. And when you are ready to give all, you have all the joys of the world available to you. When you are ready to give totally, you become open to total grace. But then there is no idea of service or duty. You are just overflowing. One is blissful and out of bliss. Just as the shadow follows you, compassion follows you, you are not even aware that your shadow is following you. Shadow makes no noise. Not even the footsteps can be heard. It simply comes following you without any noise. Not even a whisper is there. In the same way, compassion arises. It follows the meditator. Gautam the Buddha defines meditation as the reservoir of compassion. 
He says, unless you are a meditator, you cannot have compassion. Unless you are a meditative, you cannot have compassion. Compassion is a beautiful word. It is passion transformed. The passion has gone through the alchemy of meditation and it has become now compassion. It is the same energy that was involved in your passions. Now passing through the alchemical process of meditation, silence and awareness. It is now free from all pollutions. It becomes purer and purer. And when your meditation reaches its ultimate, your whole energy becomes overflowing, overwhelming love. This is compassion. Remember, this is compassion.